I am delighted right now to introduce you to our third keynote speaker. This session is sponsored by Spring and Nature. Huge thanks to them for their support of this conference. And let me tell you a little bit about Sue Lacey Bryant. Sue is the national lead for NHS Health Service Knowledge and Library Services at Health Education England. She's all about making the most of opportunities to enhance knowledge services and also equipping the library workforce. Did you just see that fly fly straight in front? It was amazing. Very special moment for me. She's also about equipping the library workforce of today and tomorrow with the skills and confidence for success in our digital age. Because of our crazy time zone differences, we won't be able to do a live Q&A with Sue, but please do send us your questions through the live Q&A button and we will send them on to Sue. And then her answers will be uploaded back into the session resources in the platform as soon as we get them. But first, your job, even though this is, you know, recorded and la la la, there's something about giving somebody a round of applause that is not just great for them, it's great for you as an audience. So give her a massive round of applause and a warm welcome to Sue Lacey Bryant. Kiora. And thank you very much for this opportunity to join you at Lianza 2021. I'm Sue Lacey Bryant, and I'm the national lead for NHS Knowledge and Library Services in England. And I work for Health Education England, which is the part of our national health service that's responsible for developing the workforce for today and for tomorrow. So as you join this session, I invite you to reflect on whether we as a profession are future ready. As you listen, I invite you to consider three questions. As a profession, how will we harness digital technologies to better manage information for the communities we serve? Are we ready to optimise the potential of digital technology and other technologies to better serve our clients and communities? And finally, the question to ourselves, how would each one of us respond and what actions might we take? So you can see I'm gonna run through an introduction, talk about the fourth industrial revolution, share the findings of the CILIP research into technology and its implications for the profession, and then speak about some of the work that I'm leading in the health sector around equipping library and information professionals for the digital age. So a little bit of context, we have 183 libraries in the National Health Service and around 1,000 posts, that's 1,200 people working in our libraries. Do look at our strategy uh, for the development of library knowledge services here, and it's the second five-year strategy, Knowledge for Healthcare, each committed to a compelling ambition to drive transformation and success across the healthcare system in England. This ambition is around seeing that the right knowledge and evidence is used at the right time, in the right place. And that's all about enabling high quality decision making, learning, research and innovation to achieve excellent healthcare and health improvement. So much to do. So today I'll be sharing key findings from research in this field commissioned by CILIP, the Library and Information Association in the UK and supported by Health Education England. But it's worth noting that the catalyst for this review was my involvement in the TOPOL review, for which I was privileged to be the review programme manager. Now, this was an independent review led by Professor Eric Topol from the Scripps Research Institute in San Diego. And you may know that Dr Topol is part of your faculty of the National Institute for Health Innovation. And that's a joint appointment with the University of Auckland. So this was a groundbreaking piece of work and it led me to ask myself and to start asking our professional body, what does the fourth industrial revolution mean for knowledge and library specialists? So what do we mean by industry four? Well, what's happening in the world of information is nothing short of revolutionary. The World Economic Forum describes what's happening as the fourth industrial revolution. So we start off in the 18th century with people harnessing water and steam power to mechanize manufacturing. And next, a technological revolution brought about by electric power mass production. We're all familiar with the IT and tech 
digital revolution. But now we're in the maelstrom of the fourth industrial revolution. And here are the key technologies, the main technologies and technology enabled approaches that form the basis of that. Artificial intelligence, AI, smart devices, 3D printing, robotics, open data, VR, virtual reality, wearables, hugely important in the health sector. Uh, and lots about process automation, uh, RPA, too relevant in our field. So much going on. And for us, the opportunity to use these technologies for the public good, to harness data, to drive intelligent decision making, is surely both daunting as well as exciting. And particularly, and one of the things that came through very loud and clear from the Topol review, and similarly in this review by SILIP, is the potential for a fusion of advances as these smart technologies come together. It is going to be disruptive. Industry 4 will be disruptive. But it will be driven by innovation in how technology is harnessed to real world processes and outcomes in business, health, industry, and government across all the sectors of public service, corporate work in which non agree knowledge specialists are engaged. So what does it mean for us then? Well, five years back, your Digital Nation report identified the essential characteristics of high technology on newness and complexity, and high technology operates near the frontier of knowledge. So we've become frontiers people. Information sharing is another important catalyst for economic growth. Activities or networks, whether physical or social, can increase the flow and use of collective knowledge about new technologies or methods. So this starts to answer what it is that we can bring to the party, what our role can be through this time. A society's knowledge and capability to use knowledge are critical for the flow of innovation and knowledge, both of which are important determinants of economic growth. Right across the globe, people are imagining the future. What will their jobs be like? What will their cities be like? What will their homes be like? And one thing we can be sure of is that knowledge is important and knowledge workers have much to offer through a time of fast paced innovation. And I'm quoting here a New Zealand Treasury paper from 10 years ago now. The same points remain ever more so in the light of current circumstances. So wanting to know more about what all this means for our specialist workforce, I reached out to SILIP, our professional body in England, across the UK, who went on to commission this research into the impact of new technologies on library and information roles and ways of working. And we were delighted from Health Education England to support this work. So let's take a look at the research brief. Uh, the purpose was to explore the impact of the fourth industrial revolution and the associated technologies of AI, machine learning, process automation and robotics on the inf information professions. Well, three questions. How do we ensure that today's workforce has the skills and understanding needed to enable us to support our users? What are the ethical implications of our approach to these technologies? And what should the skill set of the future workforce look like? What does it mean for the curriculum for the next generation of information professionals? The research was led by Dr. Andrew Cox of the Information School at the University of Sheffield and informed by an extensive literature review and conversations with 21 experts from across the UK. The work was done this time last year, November 2020. And the review goes on to look at the challenges, the opportunities and the competencies needed to take advantage of these technologies. So let's have a look at the key findings. They're presented in terms of looking at what this means uh, and the impact for users on knowledge and in services. And I'm gonna go on to look at some of the examples here. 
So where, where does the report see the applications of new and emerging technologies? Looking at users, we've got examples here of AI interacting with users, new ways to connect, voice assistants, um, using AI to support promotions, promoting data literacy, AI literacy as part of a broader range of information literacies, all sorts of targeted marketing. In terms of knowledge, the intelligent web, mobile search, of course, AI interfacing with knowledge discovery systems, and we're doing work on that right now uh, within the NHS obviously looking at data mining, all sorts of ways of analysing content more effectively, and services using robots for navigation, book location, streamlining our own processes, uh, looking at the smart library on, on the smart city uh, with an intelligent campus at its heart. So these are exciting times with new opportunities to share learning and to unlock the value of information to bring that to life with just three examples. So thinking about users, one of the case studies in the CILIP report is Library Anne, an example of using AI to deliver a chatbot to respond to routine inquiries from users. Thinking about the knowledge base, searching the knowledge base, as I've said, we have several examples from within the NHS. And given the volume of literature and research and the challenge of keeping clinical guidelines up to date, the NHS is keen to understand the potential for applying AI and machine learning to systematic reviews and evidence synthesis. And we're leading and working with partners to explore this potential further. And we see new services and activities emerging all the time and current restrictions permitting. This is an example of an after school club for children who love tech, games, coding, all supporting an integrated approach to learning about STEAM. So the key findings then start by thinking about some of the challenges, beginning with the need to grasp and accept the complexity. So the research shows that AI, machine learning, process automation and robotics are as much ideas as specific technologies. And these ideas are already changing the ways in which users interact with information. AI and robotics are our past, present and future, says Dr. Cox. They're already impacting on our lives, but adoption is patchy geographically and by sector. And the rhetoric does not always match the reality. Some jobs will go, some jobs will change, there will be new jobs. And these changes take place, of course, in the larger societal and technological context of our societies. But they certainly present a major opportunity for social good as the professions learn more about how to use them and enable users to engage with them. So, of course, yes, here there are challenges, but Dr. Cox is equally very positive about the opportunities to use these technologies to support our work and to help users engage productively and safely with them. So, a huge opportunity. Um, not as technologists, but as trusted information professionals in leadership roles, taking a driving seat in organisations as they apply these technologies, helping them to consider the issues around, um, around bias, around sustainability, huge ranges of issues uh, beyond the obvious issues of how well organised, how searchable are these things. So in leadership positions, offering an authoritative voice to employers who want to harness them in ways that will minimise the risks and as a source of trusted and authoritative uh, leadership for our users. So really, really key. Recommendations here for um, are, are different tiers of, of the service. So we've got services, individual professionals for educators, different recommendations through the report. Uh, and here we're talking about employers, senior managers and senior teams getting it right 
thinking about how we will harness these technologies to better manage information for the communities we serve. The message here is about leadership, encouraging staff to experiment, to try things out and to share what they, what they learn. And so the key issue for leaders is to create that organizational structure and environment and culture in which you can do that, in which you can experiment and feel safe and encouraged to do that in order that we can learn to maximize these new uh, tools at our service. Crucially, the review goes on to look at the competences needed to take advantage of these technologies. And the research highlights um, that, that the opportunities created play to strengths and skill sets that we already have in abundance. A strong ethical code is right at the heart of our work. We already have skills in leadership, collaboration, procurement, stewardship, content data stewardship, creating technical infrastructures, promotion. Plus, as a community, we have a knowledge about what our users need and an ability to network and communicate with a wide range uh, of disciplines and people. So certainly there's a need to translate these relevant skills to the new context. And this is a bit about repositioning. And again, goes back to um, some of that sense of experimentation, really learning about the potential. And, and we're going to need to put some work in behind that individually and collectively, aren't we? There are some new areas where we need to develop skills. And there are related recommendations deriving from that, of course, for educational institutions and for training providers. So three areas are particularly highlighted by this work. A need for computational sense, a need to uh, look at data literacy, AI and algorithmic literacy, um, and to build that into the broader approach to teaching information literacies, including health literacy. And I know that through this conference you'll be hearing from uh, Ruth Carlisle from also from the, the National Knowledge and Library Services team. I encourage you to listen to that and think about the way health literacy is underpinned by digital literacy and digital literacy is going to be underpinned by all these emerging technologies too. So what do we see? Well we see that education for new entrants to the profession will need to encompass an understanding of AI and how it might be play, applied in information contexts. And so this greater stress on that area, a need for hands-on experiences with AI applications in practice, and a need for taster courses, as well as more in-depth training in relevant applications. The report also anticipates the need for fusion skills. So we're thinking here about communication, organization, creativity in one basket. And also our so-called uh, soft skills, always a misnomer. There, there is nothing soft about being really skilled in collaborative working, in networking, in bringing people together to learn. And these skills will be in greater demand because computers cannot carry them out. Certainly not as well as humans. So what about the recommendations for each one of us individually? So this is about professionalism. It's about finding out more, trying things out, keeping our skills up to date and sharing what we learn. The strength of information professionals in taking up the opportunities created by AI and machine learning is that they really align to roles we already play. So recommendations also for um, our professional body, for Silib itself, um, really very much about telling the story, uh, helping people see the role and the relevance, sharing the work of Pathfinder organisations, and at the heart, enabling knowledge exchange between ourselves to learn as we go forward. So what about the future then? Where does this leave us? Um, we'll all be very familiar with this quotation. The future is already here. It's just not very evenly distributed. That's William Gibson. Uh, and it's an attractive quotation. And yet the more we rely on this as a mantra, 
the more we relinquish our own agency. It puts us in the position of living in a future that belongs to someone else that we've not influenced. Um, uh, and that's not the way I see it. So like Dr. Cox, I don't believe that the future is predetermined, but rather the we as a profession and as individuals can choose. Let me quote Dr. Cox in the report. The future with AI and robots is not predetermined. Do we have power to influence how AI and robots are used? Sometimes technologies are presented as external forces that cause inexorable changes to our lives as if from outside. This form of technological determinism does reflect how we sometimes experience change, particularly when it is badly managed. But in truth, technologies are social creations. Ultimately, it is societies that make choices about technologies they develop and use. And by extension, the information, knowledge management and library workforce has opportunities and an important role in choosing about the collective future through how we respond to the current wave of technologies. Really, really key, I believe. So new roles, new responsibilities. Um, and this is a quotation from our Knowledge for Healthcare strategy. AI is reshaping the way teams create, discover, share and use information. We expect the emergence of new roles and responsibilities for knowledge specialists working alongside clinical teams and health informaticians. And we believe it offers tremendous opportunity for AI powered tools to accelerate our capability to bring knowledge for healthcare to ensure that decisions about health, whether made by clinicians, healthcare professionals, other healthcare professionals, or by us as citizens and patients. So, really, really profoundly important. And yes, that means we've got to develop new competencies. And in my role as national lead for NHS knowledge and library services, equipping health library and information professionals for the digital age is very much at the center of my remit. We wanted to be proactive about identifying the competencies needed for our digital age, because in a sense, the more immediate issue is CPD for current professionals who will be operating over the next decades as AI in its many forms gradually becomes common practice. We can't wait to just educate the library and information workforce of tomorrow. So we've supported work that SILIP has done to embed the findings of the technology review into a revision, a refresh of what we call our professional knowledge and skills base. You can see that here. It's a really valuable career development tool and available to members online. It was developed with employers, practitioners, learning providers. It's the sector skills standard for the information knowledge library and data profession. And we've brought in new sections on data management, incorporating that piece on computational sense, which, which captures the skills of knowledge and library specialists in adapting and adopting new technologies and acting as a bridge between the needs of users and those developing technologies. So we're taking a proactive approach to upskilling librarians. We've introduced three education and training initiatives. We're working with library carpentries, um, bringing in a program around software development and data science. People are looking at automating repetitive library functions, for example. We're developing a, an HE Learning Academy that will be announced very shortly. Um, starting to look at offering short courses that are accredited, um, new opportunities to learn about technologies, but that learning academy will expand and um, support the healthcare workforce too around the knowledge management aspects of this. And then we're working um, to ensure that part of the data science offering coming out of uh, the University of Manchester and working with partners on that uh, will meet the needs of library and information professionals. We're ensuring there's some bespoke content in there. So what is the bottom line? Well, to quote your report on AI shaping a future New Zealand, every day AI is being increasingly used to make our lives easier and more productive. AI technologies have clearly reached a tipping point of maturity, ready for widespread application across all domains of work and life. 
we either choose to productively help shape AI's impact on our economy and society and on our libraries and our knowledge services, what we offer and how we work, or we passively let AI shape our future lives to shape or be shaped. So of course there is much to do. We're not yet future ready. There's a long distance to travel. There are hurdles to overcome and risks to manage if we are to make the most of these technologies and to do that safely. Nevertheless, as we work together with the communities that we serve, I believe there is every opportunity for us to thrive together. So to conclude, in the words of the Silic Technology Review, I believe there is a huge opportunity for our profession to position itself at the heart of this process as a source of trusted, authoritative support for our users. As we look to the future, let's turn our faces to the sun. I thank you for your time today. By all means, get in touch. And you have my contact details here. Kia ora. Fabulous Wyatt too. And that's great from Sue. She's right, isn't she? It's um it's daunting and it's exciting. And it's great, you know, the points that she was making that um this builds on skills that people already have. So it's part evolution as well as disruption. And yay for this or those of us with soft skills, which as she pointed out, aren't necessarily all that soft and they become more and more important, I think. So look, thank you for sending your questions through. I saw them, they're terrific. Um reminding people too that you can vote on questions that um really resonate with you. So we make sure that they get asked first. So I think all of those questions are going to get passed to Sue and she will come back with her answers and we will upload them for you. Again, ngamihi to Spring and Nature for their support of this session. Now we have an exciting selection of sessions coming up. So we're giving you a quick break to get ready. There will be two panels to choose from, two workshops and a Lianza strategic leadership session all those things. Choose one of those. Remember, you can watch the other ones later. So pick what you most want. Join us again in a few minutes. Matiwa.